The reason this fish is compared to a cow is not just because it's massive. There is so much more to this fish and I cannot wait to show y'all. This fish is over 100 pounds and totally awkward shape. How do I get it on the table? This is an opa. The only known fully warm-blooded fish in the entire ocean. They're not targeted. They're a bycatch, but they're an absolutely delicious bycatch. Opa is compared to cows because you get so many different cuts off of it and each one eats differently, including muscle meat that is very similar to beef. Just wait until you see how different each part of this fish looks. So first, we're gonna make our initial incision right behind the head. And here, this is its pectoral fin, and you can see the plate that its pectoral fin is on, and there is a cutoff from that plate where the weight of the fish is pulling it down. So we're gonna cut right there, go behind that hard part, right where it's soft. We're just gonna outline where we feel it hard, meeting the soft, making sure we don't miss out on any of that delicious opa meat. These fish have a lot of meat behind the head. They have small cheeks for how massive they are, but they make up for it and how much meat is right behind that head. And the meat behind this head has very little muscle, so it's super tender. After we cut behind the head, we're now going to work our way down along the entire fish. We're gonna start down here on top of the dorsal fin Get a nice little incision and slide down. Down here, there's a thick spine that can guide your knife. You don't have that once you get up into that head meat. At first, you have this cartilage right here. Once you get past that, you can see the spine. That spine, we can rest our knife down with a little bit more force and make nice, long, smooth motions just like that. What we're doing right here is cutting through all of the fibers that are connected to this big dorsal fin. The way this fish's fin moves like a joint, it's totally crazy. And you can see all this muscle and tissue that is a part of making that fin work, very similar to a tuna. This fish is so heavy, we like sliding our hand underneath and using the broad side of our hand to lift up on that meat so that way we're not digging into the meat as we work it. We are to the center now. We're going to try to release the meat behind the head. Just like that, it's pulling out. Right here, this bone jets out. You wanna get the meat above it, then you have to circle around to get around this bone right here. All right, now, Oh, we're gonna twist this massive fish around. You can feel the bone from this fish's collar. What you wanna do is we wanna cut along the inside of that bone, which is gonna come right in front of the anal fin. So it's gonna be between the pelvic fin and the anal fin that we're gonna be coming right down. Just like that. On these fish, you can feel right here that's just hard bone and cartilage. The meat starts up here. Opa is typically found in warmer tropical waters, like the Pacific Ocean. You can find these fish off the coast of San Diego, California, and south. They're also found in other parts of the world. One of my friends is a fish cutter in Hawaii, and he sees these all the time. Here in sunny South Florida and on the east coast of the United States, we really don't see these fish. Though it can happen, but when it does, it's just a total fluke. My friend Tommy from Tunaville Market and Grocery in San Diego, California is actually the fishmonger that introduced me to this fish. Look how massive these rib bones are right here. And this is that bone that we're outlining the inside of right here. You might not have heard of Opa before, but you've likely heard the term moonfish. Moonfish and opa are the same thing. Opa is just what is typically referred to inside of a seafood market. Now there's just this little bit of membrane connecting both sides. We're gonna put the tip of our knife right there. Little flick, and this whole thing should release nicely. Oh. Wait until you see it. There is our beautiful opa 
coming all the way down to sunny South Florida. Now there's some crazy unique cuts of this fish that are gonna come right from this section that you've probably never seen before. But first, we're gonna show you all the different parts of the filet. All right, so you see this line right here. This is going to be the eye. You have two pieces right here. This whole thing is going to be similar to a back strap. Or if you were comparing it to a cow, this would be more like the New York strip of the entire thing. This right here would be the filet mignon. And then the belly with its super fattiness is going to be more like a ribeye cap. But I'm going to go into more detail. First, we're going to separate the high loin from the low loin. The low loin is always going to be the side with the belly on it. The high loin is the other side. How you separate those two sides is the pin bone line. So you've got the pin bone line right here. We're going to cut on one side of it and come all the way down. There's our low loin and here's our high loin. We always take the pin bone line off the other side. So we're going to slide all the way down just like that. We want to cut as close to that pin bone line as we can, not to lose out on any of that delicious meat when we take this off. And on Opa, the pin bones in the front hook underneath the filet, unlike a lot of other fish. So it takes a few extra seconds to get all the pin bones off the front of the high loin. See how I had to dig underneath the filet to get those bones out? That's where they were. Now we're gonna separate this high loin into its two separate parts. We're going to find that white line that is on the inside, not the one on the outside, and follow it all the way down. And you can see, once you give it that opening, it has a natural separation there. You can see right here, kind of like beef, how when you start separating two cuts, you can push away on it and they start pulling apart. All right, there is the eye of our high loin. That is gonna be the filet mignon of the opa. This is gonna be super popular for sushi, sashimi, nigiri, doing quick sears. You turn that into perfect blocks, sear it just like a tuna, phenomenal. Now the rest of the high loin, you can either leave it as one piece or you can separate it in its other two parts. They are going to be different from each other and I want you guys to see that. It's just like the eye, you can see where this natural separation is and we're gonna follow that along just like a butcher would in separating two different parts of the cow. And there you go, that would be the inside of our back strap or New York strip and there would be the outside. This right here is the meat behind the head and that is a super tender part of the fish. Absolutely delicious. Now each part of these fish you're going to want to cook or treat differently and we're going to talk about all the different ways that you can prepare opa and how you want to treat each piece like its own cut of beef. Now we're going on to the belly. A lot of people's favorite part. Because oh, who doesn't love fatty cuts of meat? Whether it's fish or cow, fatty usually means more full of flavor, buttery texture, and this fish is no different. You can see these lines where the rib bones were. To the outside of that, is gonna be the butteriest part of our belly. Right underneath those ribs is still a part of the belly, but it's gonna be the leaner part of the belly. If you're talking about tuna, you'd be talking about otoro, the fattiest part, and chutoro, the less fatty part. Uh, toro just means fatty cut. A lot of people hear toro and they think belly just means fatty. So first we're going to cut all the way down right there. Now you can see the the fatty inside, it's not gonna be fatty like tuna, but that is gonna be absolutely delicious. We're gonna skin this, and we're gonna add that to our collection of different parts of the fish. That was the center of our low loin. Now, we have the rest of our low loin. 
We're gonna call this the bottom, closer to the tail. And you can see this natural separation right here. That is an absolutely awesome, awesome, awesome part of low loin. People often hear low loin and they think that is a lower quality part of the fish. It's not as prized as the other parts, but pieces like this off the low loin, extraordinarily tender. Mm. As a tenderness and a similar flavor profile of a center cut akami. Akami is the high loin of the tuna, the center cut most prized part because it is so tender. This, very similar. Now we're going to cut across right here. Even though this is the tail, this is still an absolutely delicious part of the fish. And there's our beautiful opa belly. There's the bottom of our low loin, and here's the eye of our low loin. Phenomenal part of the fish. All right, up next, I'm gonna show you guys the crazy looking edible mussels in Opa. But first, we do not wanna miss out on any of that delicious meat along the skeleton of the fish. Using a spoon, I find, helps get in between the invertebra really nicely. And uh, fortunately, we did a good job filleting this fish, so there's not a ton here. but what there is, we don't want to miss out on. And look at that, that's killer stuff that you do not want to leave behind. Now we're gonna pull out the abductor muscle. We're going to make a big circle underneath that pectoral fin. Once you hit a bone right here, you can start riding along that bone, cutting down underneath, and you can see how the cap of this muscle just starts pulling apart. And again, you guys, this is why this fish is compared to beef, because in beef, you can just like pull away different parts of the animal the same way that you can here. This is just absolutely a gift to get to cut such an awesome fish, get to eat such an awesome fish. Getting to play with an animal this cool is freaking awesome. And if you look here, that is just solid fat. We are not throwing this skin away with all that fat attached. We're gonna teach you what to do with it. You can watch this muscle at work moving up and down, that's crazy. We're gonna peel this skin away just to get it out of our way. We also want that fat. Now, almost like a massive cheek, you can kind of outline that bone, let the bone Guide your knife. You want your knife pushed along that bone so that way you don't miss out on any of this delicious abductor muscle meat. And it cuts underneath this really, really hard bone right here. So we're sticking our knife in there and getting back to make sure we don't miss out on anything. All right, final separation right here. And, and there is the Opa abductor muscle. I know it looks crazy. It looks like there's no way that this would be delicious, but it is. We're going to trim off a little bit that extra red meat that is gonna be very irony tasting. Just so you guys can see it, we're gonna split this right down in half. Look at that. Look how good that meat looks. It is absolutely insane how good that looks. And just like beef, you can kind of make a separation between those two different parts of this muscle. If you wanna shave off the less desirable part. The bloody part does have umami, so we don't like cutting all of it out. But just like that. And this blood is totally usable. It does have a meaty flavor. If you season it right and cook it in some good beef fat, it'll be delicious. But right here, this part, 
Look how good that looks as a piece of sushi or a piece of sashimi. Mm, that is absolutely phenomenal. It has a mild irony flavor, just like tuna, but a velvety ocean flavor. It kind of coats your mouth. It is so good. All right, we've got one more mussel in here to cut out. There's a bone right here. You want to stick your knife in up along that bone and outline it. You don't want to go straight down, otherwise you'll lose out on some of that muscle meat. So we're sticking it in there. You can almost see the knife through the bone. It's translucent. Cut behind, cut down, and with your fingers, run it along. One last piece right there, and we got it. We're going to, this muscle has two different parts to it. You can see the sinew right here. We're going to separate that into its two separate pieces, and we're going to pull away. That is just chewy sinew. We don't want that, but the meat along it is delicious. We can scrape that off with a spoon as well and add it to our pokey pile. And let's come over here and check out this muscle as well. We're gonna split it right down the middle to show you what it looks like. And look how good that looks. That really does look like the center cut of a high loin of a beautiful tuna. Look how amazing that meat looks. Mm. Even though it's a muscle, it is so tender. It is plump and jello-y and no chewiness at all. It is phenomenal. And I know you guys have been wondering what do the cheeks look like on a fish this massive? I said earlier that they were smaller, but you wanna see them anyway. I don't blame you, let's check them out. So this is all super hard. There's a small soft spot right here. That's where we're gonna find the cheeks. We're gonna puncture the outline of that soft spot and start outlining. So we're gonna just outline where the soft meets the hard. Keep those jokes to yourself and we're going to find the bone, which is right there, and scrape along it. Cut right underneath its lip. That releases the rest of the cheek, and then we can usually peel the cheek right off the skin, just like so. And that's what the cheek looks like of an opa that is over 100 pounds. There's the inside, not so amazing looking. The outside looks a little bit better. So if we show you where we just cut that out, there is nothing left underneath that lip. That's where the meat was around here. That's all bone and this is its eyeball. The skin with all the fat, told you we weren't throwing that away. What we're gonna do, we're gonna scrape that fat off the skin Look at the marbling in that. That's absolutely insane. But this isn't like tuna belly. This is fat right off the skin. So what we wanna do is we wanna deep fry it and make fatty fried opa skin. It's delicious. Look at all the different cuts we got out of one fish. Each one is going to eat different, very similar to all the different cuts of the cow. Which one would you go for first? You guys, thank you for watching. Have a killer day.